Oh, okay. Damn. All right. What'd you do? Uh, I, nothing, man. <laughs> I'm I'm a silly guy right now. I'm just a silly, happy little guy. Look at my hair. Hello. You got a haircut. That's a new shirt. It looks like. Yeah, it's a seven strong brand shirt, long sleeve, and oh, uh, shit. you're gonna be seeing me wear the shit out of these in old Japan. These are my Japanese travel shirts. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta look through and see which ones, which new additions I want. Yeah, you really got to get your seven strong brand shirt together because I, I'm telling you, they're they're comfortable and they're, they they <laughs> they don't breathe. <laughs> Let's okay. Let's do this for real. I'm sorry. None of this is good. All right. Len, why don't you take the reins on this episode? Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. All right. And it's 4.17, and we are starting the podcast. (laughs) What was that? Was that a milkshake? (laughs) No, it's a Vietnamese iced coffee. Oh, okay. (laughs) I'm not just having milkshakes in the middle of the day. That'd be obscene. You earned it. You've had a, a weird, long annoying day you know what dude i love you but i was i went full anti lun today i really didn't give a shit i wasn't mad i didn't spaz or yell i just kind of handed myself over to the universe and said k sarah sarah because what are you gonna do my battery wasn't working i have no practical skills um if they did some kind of draft they would if they did a draft, I would only be drafted as a draft horse. You'd be a burrow. They, they would load ammunition onto your sturdy back. <laughs> I'd like to think that I would be the mule that transported the army brass band. <laughs> I'd want to have like a like All a trombone player or a couple of trumpeters on my back and just <laughs> and I do like a fun like kind of prance dance as their show host that'd be that'd be fun Mm. well yeah fuck you i don't spaz i don't you you, and this is the first time ever that this happened and you didn't lose it privately so i never lose it yeah (laughs) don't say you're the anti-lon as if i'm always out there spazzing and going well well, you know this is ridiculous i don't do that shit you know what this is unbelievable you say it's lund believable is what you say. I get, I'll I get walk my it shit back. In. Becker, what do you think? Am I crazy to maybe frame it as uh, Lund and I have different levels of patience? I Different things irritate you guys. That's right. Mine's mostly wool. Wool? You're allergic. Yeah, yeah. I get irritated by wool textiles. Yeah, Nathan gets irritated by unnecessary bullshit. Yeah, yeah. People uh, riding bicycles with one hand. Uh, if, if a guy has one sock pulled up and the other one is down. Yeah, it's it's just different stuff. So, yeah, you remembered to breathe, and that's good, even though a hobo chewed through your battery cable <laughs> and it was raining so hard that nothing could be done. <laughs> You know what's funny about it is I called my dad, I called my sister, I called Emily, and I called David Borey, and all four of them, their hypothesis was is that I was a victim of sabotage. They thought that someone had followed me into the parking structure on Thursday and somehow hotwired my hood open and then chewed through the wires to disconnect my battery. Uh, yeah, and I was like, I really don't think that I have that many em- enemies out there that someone would plot my very, the, the dumbest downfall there is, which is just being inconvenienced for two hours. Did you uh, park at DIA? Park to jet. Nice. Yeah, they've got it locked down there. So I would imagine it wasn't anyone that was able to get in there without a reservation. Rabbits or rats? yeah you got rats it could be rats so what happened to the uh, uh the listener the uh the humble listener who we're here to serve and bring joy to for 
just a brief fleeting hour out of their week. Uh, the listener that we love and value above all and hold sacred. And uh, honestly, I would lay down my life for each and every one of you. Given... I, already said, I already said, there's a problem with your battery cable. Now you're home. Oh, yes. And you know what, listener? This podcast is all about not yes anding or uh, or following. Well, take along. longer, take longer to explain something that you didn't even want to talk about because it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Which one is it? Are you gonna build it up or are you are we gonna move on? I thought we were allowed to be like lava lamps on this show. No, I thought we were liquid. We're spitfires. We, we were glycerin and oil, and we just kind of flow and we make the party a little more sensual. No, let's so, move. Um. Well, hey, we can get to your city council meeting in a minute, dude. All right. <laughs> uh, ha, ha, ha. Well, no, we both had shows, so. I So my guy, there, the, the cable was stripped, so I thought that uh, it had been severed. There was an inch missing in the red cable in my battery. But uh, a man named Muhammad showed up because he worked there, and he, he fixed it all up. And then it started raining really, really hard. And then I had to wait another hour for the rain to stop and him to come back from, uh, you know, whether it was the second or third time he prayed that day. I had him with an inshallah and 40 bucks at the end of it. He loved it. So, yeah, <laughs> he, he, did the, he did the worm with his uh, prayer rug. He, he did it on the rug. Yes. Yeah. So it, was, uh, it actually counted as his fourth prayer that day. So he had to go home early. <laughs> He's facing east. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was spinning like a top, so he had every angle. Um, he fixed it, and I came home. And now here we are, podcasting, and some of us have cool beverages. And cool I got haircuts. two beverages. Uh, now, is, is, is one of them jizz? No, I don't drink jizz. God, oh, I, okay. I, I so smoke I just, it. I just want to debunk the rumors that have been floating around out there. I smoke jizz. That's the way to do it. Becker knows. smoke jizz. Yeah, you can't keep it wet long enough to collect enough to drink. You got to dry it out and smoke it. Well, so you'd be surprised if you have a humidifier <laughs> and uh, a, a tea maker, you can keep jizz wet for a long time. But that's not what we're doing here. Lund, what's the latest on your end, buddy? Uh, I went and had good shows in Oklahoma. That was fun. I almost had car trouble too. I got the uh, low oil light after getting to uh my hotel so i drove from trinidad to tulsa did a show and then drove back west to oklahoma city because i got one hotel room for friday and saturday and got the fucking light and i was worried about it um but i went to walmart saturday and got oil and put a cord in the light turned off and i made it home the light did not come on so the light I, did I was not ready to come lose, on. I was ready to lose my shit if because uh, Walmart's the only thing open. And I go and I, after I get the oil, I look under the car and some of it came out like right away. So I was like, oh, I'm fucked. So I tried to get it looked at by one of the Walmart mechanics and they were slammed. And a guy, the guy was like, you know, they could maybe tell you what's wrong with it, but they can't fix it. And I was like, oh, yeah, because they just do oil changes and tires at Walmart. So and you so I said, said fuck it just <laughs> let's just walk it back about moments ago you said that your oil yes i almost on. got annoyed with something <laughs> yeah i didn't say that i don't get annoyed i said i don't spaz about little shit <laughs> you said you almost lost your shit <laughs> moments after yelling at me for maybe thinking that you would have been pissed that your battery was dead when you got back from four days on the road yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're you're smart and I'm stupid. You're right and I'm wrong. And you're now cool you're pouting. I suck. No, you're just annoying the shit out of me, Becker. Because also noticed it, and he didn't say anything because he lives in fear of you due to your physical violence. <laughs> it just made me giggle. Yeah. It was fun juxtaposition there. Yes, it was. Ah. Uh. This is but, this is my version of gotcha journalism. Well, listen to this. So when I get the oil, I yeah. leave, I try to leave Walmart, and this old fuck is you know the greeter, the the receipt checker, and I have the two quarts of oil in a bag, and he looks at my receipt, looks in the bag. Oh, two two things of oil, two things of oil. I said, yeah. He goes, 
you don't have any naked ladies in there? And I was like, no, just the oil. And he was like, no naked ladies? What the heck? <laughs> it made me so mad because it was so <laughs> shitty and weird to do. That does suck when you're obviously dealing with a problem. So dumb. Well, and just that's what he's doing all day. He's at Walmart making jokes so that people can just fucking be affected by this guy instead of being an npc who does the bare minimum to keep walmart afloat and protect them from shoplifter shoplifters you know this to say all right they're not, you know as if <laughs> there's a shelf where there's just small naked women <laughs> and then you you pick them up and put them in your bag and they're four dollars <laughs> and you do what you want with them well you so have, you, you don't have them and maybe so, Maybe he was like just insane. Maybe he was experiencing <laughs> dementia. Maybe he thought there were actually maybe a chance that there was a tiny little lady in there and he might be able to take a peek. He saw the receipt and he saw two naked ladies. He's like, hey, you paid for them. Go get them. <laughs> and I, so I, I was annoyed with him and just wanted to like leave. But after I took I, a few I, steps, I, 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 I hate when say, an old guy makes me try to smile. Oh, yeah. It's very innocent to say shit like that to nine out of ten dudes that go through there it's fucking dumb it's annoying and so i said to him i said loudly so that he could hear me i didn't turn around but as i was walking out i went i'm gay and there were people that were coming in <laughs> and i like i like that all they heard was just a dude walking out by himself saying i'm gay <laughs> without context <laughs> Damn it, my fucking my video is delayed ah uh, man what fun but, but no it's stupid <laughs> it's just stupid to say shit like that when you're just supposed to say hello when they come in and say goodbye check their receipt before they leave i don't have two naked ladies in here old man dude i mean you know what I, I want to have a nice time on this pod right now and get along, so I'm not going to comment any more on that. Uh, it, I'm glad not, that you... It's not innocent. It's not innocent. You think it's not a big deal. It is What dumb. is not innocent about it? How because is that malicious? Not, not every How is that dude, malevolent? Not every dude is straight and wants naked ladies in there. It's just a weird thing to say when you don't know somebody. <laughs> not every dude wants naked ladies in there. There's no naked ladies in there. No matter what. There's never going to be a naked lady in there. I know. It's just a weird thing to say. But of course, you think it's fine and are tearing up at the idea of the national anthem <laughs> yet again. What's wrong with that? It's your you, you have too many concussions and your brain is broken. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you identify more with that old man than me. I identify with a guy who's just trying to give a little smile to someone randomly. I do that shit all the time. I'm always interacting with strangers, trying to make them laugh. I think that's a nice thing to do. That's dumb. All right. Okay. Well, can I ask you this? Did the robot save the city this weekend? Yeah. Yeah, the city was saved. That's just the name of James's production company. I don't know why you care so much that i brought it up i was shouting him out james nim i was saying meme that's nim secrets of nim that's how i remember it uh i told the joke about uh when we were in norman and the word of the day for the norman newspaper was sarcasm and uh james didn't remember the joke but he remembered us uh going through norman when he was like 19 or whatever did you say Oklahomos? No. You didn't say, hey, Oklahomos, who's ready for their Oklahomas? <laughs> no, I told Bobby I was going to Joklahaha because it was Joklahoma or Oklahoma. And I, think, I like Joklahoma better. I like Oklahomos. That's my favorite one. Yeah, that's good. You should have said that to that guy, that greeter. <laughs> you should have been like, hey, man, that's not funny. I'm an Oklahoma. And then you could have high-fived him. We exist. <laughs> he would have had a new thing to say to people. He would have been like, oh, there's no, no, there's no naked ladies in here? What, are you in Oklahoma? Yeah. That would have been good. So here's, here's my deal. I 
came in rather sleepless on the plane, and then I thought I was going to have to wait there till 3.30 in the afternoon. So I ate an edible almost immediately. And then so I was driving home talking to David Borey, and then the edible kicked in. And then we were supposed to do this thing at 4, but I got confused and thought that I left my backpack in the airport, but really I just put it in my suitcase. So there was like a 20 minute period where I was like, where's my fucking backpack? Oh no, <laughs> I've blown it. Uh, but no, it was just in my, it was just in my suitcase. <laughs> so there we go. Full disclosure. I'm an open book. I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a close call. It was a real close call, man. The Patreon episode yesterday, I think was, it might, it might've been, the funniest Patreon episode I've done without you, or the worst Patreon episode I've done without you? I'm not sure. There were mixed reviews re- regarding the Pokemon aspect. <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon ending was a real wild <laughs> turn. It was going so well, and then you and Pat were like, what if? And you addressed it a minute or two into talking about Pokemon. You said out loud, who is this podcast for? And then just continued. No one addressed you saying that. You or Pat never mentioned it again. You just plowed on. Well, the bit was a man sitting down his 18-year-old son on his 18th birthday to give him a serious talk. And it's about his Pokemon team for (laughs) Game Boy. (laughs) For Pokemon Red. Uh, he's all pissed at him (laughs) (laughs) it was it was good it was just a (sighs) wild turn of events yeah there was i got two um notifications at once i think from reddit and one said something negative like way too much pokemon but at least it ended (laughs) abruptly or something and then the other one was like loved the pokemon discussion (laughs) so you know you gotta you can't please everybody all the time Oh, I was, I was fucking pleased. <laughs> you, were in, you were in the car with Pat, like crawling through traffic because of an accident. Is that right? Yeah, there was a terrible accident uh, right past Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So it should have been like a three and a half hour ride. drive ended up being like a five and a half hour drive. <laughs> and you can only go to Wawa so many times and get so many cheese stuffed pretzels before you're like, you know what? I'll admit it. This stuff, this is sucks. This is bad. But uh, shout out to District Elixirs in Washington, D.C. They gave us a bunch of syringes of uh, simple syrup with weed in them. So those were mm-hmm. those were flying all weekend. We were slapping. <laughs> we were tickling. We were pretending to be Pokemon dads. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get over the idea of just how funny it would be if I was shrunk down but still had to keep doing stand up. <laughs> <laughs> wait was the poke- was the was the, the dad was upset with the the quality of the of the team as opposed to <laughs> yes. the existence how the team of... was built the types right it was Just really poor. they both showed their asses on how many nerds they are <laughs> like real hard A- after giving me shit about my ninja turtle discussion wowie we wow you guys went hard in the paint yeah. Well, it's just, yeah, it's like, hey, you know, he's not mad that the kid's experimenting with drugs or alcohol or having unprotected sex. He's just mad that he has an Arcanine and a Rapidash and is starting sick. <laughs> They're both fire types, son. <laughs> okay, yeah, so very specific, very, uh, very detailed. Intense. Yeah, Pokemon. and the whole, the whole, like, dork aspect of my life is out of the bag. A kid showed up last night. He goes by the name of Dick Stinkley on Instagram. Shout oh, out sure. Dick Stinkley. He showed up with four foil DCI goblin guides and had me sign those, which I was like, oh, my God, dude, this is so cool. I was like moved. That was oh, Patrick had a bunch of words to describe what happened. Uh (laughs) Yes. Let's just say that the way that I was acting, if that greeter at Walmart checked my bag, he would not have wondered if there were any naked ladies in there. <laughs> no, no possible chance that there were any naked ladies anywhere on my person. But so imagine if I was shrunk down and had to keep doing stand up. How big? And, Pokemon uh, size? So I think inside of a shot glass. <laughs> yeah the description the description on the pod made it feel like about an inch and a half two, two inches, inches tall, tall. <laughs> and i don't okay. want to do a greatest hits right now but i'm stoned as fuck i am so high 
oh my god these edibles are mental um so but yeah just the idea of being a tiny person but still like like no one's like all right we're gonna fix this for you it's Mm -hmm. more like well hey you still have to do these shows in milwaukee you have a contract (laughs) so now i'm like on an airplane like uh put your seatbelt on sir and it's like all my body is just buried in the seatbelt like what is it gonna do what do you think it's gonna fucking do yeah you have to get in the pocket at that point where the (laughs) safety information is and that'd be better be you have to wear a seven strong button up shirt and I have to be in your pocket. And I'm just here like, Hey, give me some of that fucking sandwich. <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about? A morsel of this would be way too big for you. And I'm like, I know. Let's go halves. <laughs> <laughs> you demand halves. Come on, man. We're, we're both men. Like my stomach is the size of a freckle, but I'm still as hungry as I was when I was big. You don't have. You still don't have. You still don't have the enzyme. I still lack the you enzyme. You're, you're <laughs> my uh, enzymes weren't shrunk. It was just my physical form. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like when I signed up for the fucking reverse bigifying treatment, I didn't do the research. I didn't look into it. That's on me. All right. I thought that if they could make me little, they could make me big again. But no. So now I'm fucked. <laughs> He's just always so pissed because no one can help him. <laughs> uh, I'm fucking pissed, man. <laughs> <laughs> just like like every time you hang out with your buddies, you go to the bar, you're sitting on the bar, and they like pour like a splash of gin on there for you. You have to suck it up. And you're just down there getting all tanked, and you're like, I'm just pissed all the time. <laughs> And everyone's like, I get it, man, but what are we going to do? Just no one really caring. Everyone's bored of you talking about it. It's like when your friend gets divorced and you go on the boys trip with him. Every night he gets drunk and he just keeps bringing up how much he misses her. And you're like, dude, I get it, but we can't do anything about it. It's over. Your days of being big are over. You just have to come to terms of being little now. (laughs) Uh, I watched some of uh, Big in the hotel room and it made me laugh because... You know, he tries to go, he gets big and he tries to go home and his mom freaks out, you know, and won't listen because she just sees a dude. And then he has to like call her and say that he has Josh, he has her son, but that he's okay. And it was just funny to me to like, (laughs) it's in like this goofy, silly comedy, but that's like a mother's worst nightmare yeah and he starts once he gets that job he's making money and so he he like is dicking around and will like tell her yeah like we're gonna return your son everything's fine and it's like but she thinks you know he's probably getting touched reamed tortured (laughs) maybe yeah probably reamed yeah like he's they they think that they're like filming videos that they're selling at the flea yeah. market yeah like yeah she just i don't know like she definitely does a good job of like freaking out but she would like i don't know like <laughs> that it's such an awful time for her while and the dad you know is like not even in the movie at that point it's just the mom like getting phone calls and like she should be like not eating and like roaming the streets and then <laughs> Yeah, she should be chain smoking inside and there's a police van outside of her house at all times. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and while she's doing that, just like hoping that she doesn't have to identify her kid's body at the end of this, he gets a trampoline and a soda machine that's and free. laid. It sees some tit, yeah, through the bra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny to me to picture, yeah, just a parent the 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 big the worst thing that could happen to them and then he's just you know living it up yeah like the husband his dad should come home and she's standing on the second story balcony like drunk like walking on the banister you know (laughs) like like an almost famous just he's dead already (laughs) i can tell he's gone (laughs) yeah they killed him they killed my boy yeah she just has a complete break she's like we're all big now (laughs) she just i don't know it's also funny to imagine her list like believing this man is her son yeah and being and just like dealing with it i don't know it's just weird weird uh premise for a film it's a good movie man i mean it is good but i always wanted one of those uh giant pianos 
But then I would realize that when I, if I was that big, if I was little, but I was made big and it was like my version of a big boy body, I just would have shattered those fucking pianos real quick. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like Richard Dent. It's like the fucking huge. 80s bears <laughs> doing the Super Bowl shuffle on it, just crushing them. Yeah. FAO Shorts is like, well, you just ruined our new installation. This was three hundred thousand dollars you just destroyed with your big body. <laughs> yeah, how much would that would that cost a kid or a, a, the parents of a child, a young prodigy? It would have it's also to be funny to think about if I was little. Five grand. If I was little, uh, Emily, like I'm sitting like on the couch next to Emily, and she's her size, and she's like, yeah, you know, he's little now, and uh, everything's different. Uh, I can't say if it's really better or worse, but I'm down there and she's so far away. Like if you think about the scale of it, she's so far away. I can't hear her. So I'm just like, <laughs> what's she saying? I can't hear a fucking word she's saying up there. I bet it's not good. I bet she's pissed. Is she pissed? But no one can hear me because I'm so yeah. little. <laughs> You'd be able to hear her. I don't know. It's like you can hear like... It's kind of like when a jet goes overhead. Like you, like you don't hear the individual individual gears of it. You just hear like this booming screeching. Right, but that's because and also of the, the bones in my ear would be waves. so little that I wouldn't be able to hear her because they're so little. Yeah, your ears would just explode and they'd be bleeding. No. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, good. <laughs> Look at this shit now. <laughs> I'm fucking deaf and now, tiny. <laughs> I'm fucking minuscule and deaf. Are you guys happy? <laughs> Make me big. This sucks. There's, 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 yeah, there's like a fucking <laughs> online petition. Make Sam big again. I have to like sit down with my senator and be like, dear senator, please make me big. <laughs> I'll take anything. Five seven, five nine, yeah. five ten. Three ten. I don't care. Being being a being a midge would be better than being this small. <laughs> That's in uh big top peewee, the Circus comes to town and Chris Christopherson's like the leader and then his wife is Midge and she's as big as you're talking about and nobody says anything. She's not pissed, she but she acts like <laughs> it's just how it is and they make it work. It's tough, but we make it work because we love each other. And it's like, okay, let's see you day one. Like, what are you doing when you're alone? Yeah. Probably fighting. All, probably fighting, probably bickering. Um because it'd bleeding. be really bad if Emily got shrunk down because I'd have to do all the cleaning and she'd be so mad about it. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, there's dust motes everywhere. And it's like, I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, look at me. I'm as big as them. I can tell. <laughs> I see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm too, I don't know if this is good. I'm just stoned and I think being small would be a lot of fun. I like the idea of you on a stool and then the mic is in the stand. Yeah, but it doesn't even pick up my voice. It's ten, well, yeah, just barely. Everybody has to be very quiet. <laughs> You're like, look at that wad. <laughs> nice haircut. <laughs> and everyone's like, is, is someone up there? I can't hear anything. I, I hear like a low hum. <laughs> we paid yeah, for this. like a hummingbird. Oh, man. Whew. But yeah, uh, both of my shows were fun and good, and I had a nice time. Good. And that was a surprise because Friday in Tulsa, God, there was this table. So this woman recorded my set and I'm thinking about ask, trying to find her and asking her for it because I, I did a pretty good job, I think, of rolling with the punches. And I was like, Sam, I didn't spaz. I rolled with it and had fun with it, even though I had every right to be mad at this yeah. table. Dude's phone went off twice. He had two cell phones and a hatchet man necklace and looked like he owned a pawn shop. And then, God, just they wouldn't shut up. They sat right up front and wouldn't shut up. But instead of like shutting down, I just made fun of them a little and then would move on. So it ended up being a good time. And I, I think it would come across, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a hold of this lady. I think some of the comics knew her, so. We'll see, but I'll I'll probably try and share it because I think it was worthwhile. I think that's a great idea. Get that Lund content going. Put it on NathanLund.com. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll try and get it on the Patreon because uh, it ended up being a good set. People were pretty stoked. After like Afterwards, that. after the they had a roast battle, and I thought, oh, good. This, you know, I I figured it 
could have been very bad and it wasn't everybody was funny and clever and mean without crossing any like real lot you know they, they did a good job i didn't know if they would uh just all blow it i didn't know any of the comics ahead of time but it was a good night it was fun it would have been funny if one of the comics in the roast battle was that old man greeter from Walmart. <laughs> and he comes on stage and you go up and, you know, you silence the third year open mic here and you're like, hey, kid, I'll take it from here. And then you whip out your testicular sack and you're like, but there's a couple naked chicks in this bag. Why don't you come check it out, you old bitch? <laughs> uh, that would be good. This summer, we're no longer allowing our underwear to be a sweaty swamp or our balls stick together. And my underwear are the worst part of my wardrobe. I'll tell you that right now. Often it feels like I'm sitting in pancake batter or uh, I'm wearing like a waffle iron, but it's not plugged in. Now I'm just sitting in two different waffles. And that's why I'm a big fan of sheath underwear. Uh, there's two pouches, one for your dick and one for your other dick. So both your dicks don't have to hang out anymore. That's good. Nothing sticks together, so you stay cool and comfortable. This is all good stuff. They also have tons yes. of colors and patterns, so no matter what the summer brings, you'll look and feel awesome with sheath. I need more cool, festive undies. I've always said my underwear are too fucking plain and boring, but these sheath underwear now, uh, you know, because they were founded by uh, former uh, Grand Wizard Robert Patton, <laughs> excuse me, not Grand Wizard, Ar Army, Army General Robert Patton, I don't remember the guy's name, but he's some kind of fucking war guy. And uh, he makes them so that they're in camouflage. So now I can uh, I can sneak into the neighbor's lawn and my just my undies and steal all of their rutabagas and carrots. And no one can tell. Like we said, we're wearing them right now and we love it. My dick just high five my balls and said, this is going to be a hell of a summer, bros. Yeah, my dick just said to my balls, you guys stink. I'll be in my room. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call? Uh, you mentioned the 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 old timey stock. What the fuck is it called when you're the like stocks? No, but you called it something else recently and said that you would be in it. And when Becker mentioned the ball and dick area, it made me think of putting your dick and balls into like the middle of town in the stock it's not the stocks it was something else i had to look it up and i was like oh yeah sam that is really thing. smart eh, you're is, too stoned you won't remember it. i don't think i'll remember either i don't know but you but, know, I'm, know what i remember i remember the first time i saw my cousin alita's friend kendall skeels in a sports bra all right and i'll never fucking forget that so if you don't have sweaty balls maybe you have some sweaty ass titties maybe you're fucking heavy meaty dumpers are just encased and they look like fucking delicious dumplings that have yet to be steamed. In that case, Sheath has some comfortable and breezy sports bras for you. Uh, I'm going to get a sports bra for my wife. I'm going to get her some board shorts and we're going to have a non-binary fuck party. All right. <laughs> we're going to all be wearing sports bras. We're all going to be wearing boy shorts. I, my hair is nice and short. I shave every day. I'm going to shave her down and we're just going to fucking figure out who's dick and clit tingles and squirts the most <laughs> how's that for Adam <laughs> head to sheathunderwear.com and use code head chubby to butt underwear to get 20% off your first order plus sheath underwear is 100% money back guarantee that's sheathunderwear.com promo code chubby 20% off your first order get sheath underwear support the show and support your balls yes head to sheathunderwear.com thank you I had Whataburger twice. Ooh. Wow, there you go. It was fucking good. Especially the first night. Yes, the queen. The double cheeseburger was like really good. Then I tried to get another one the next night. It wasn't as good, but it was pretty solid. And I want, James told me to go to a place called Bunnies. They do like an onion burger, and it's been there since like 1901 or something. But it was Yeah, the Oklahoma they, onion burger is legendary. They closed at nine, and so I wasn't able to get it. Hence... Double Whataburger, but it was good. Um, I'm glad to hear you're out there Definitely sampling all the now. delicacies of uh, this big country of ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were you up to? You went to Baltimore. You went to Harrisburg. The I went to Baltimore. I went to D.C. DC. I went to 
Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I went to Pittsburgh last night. Got hair, got haircuts after the show. Uh, you know Joe Esch? You know known homosexual Joe Esch in Pittsburgh? Yeah. He just went on a 28-day tour, and he came to the show last night fresh off the road. So I gave him a guest set, and, you know, he, he, he did fine or whatever. But he was just out there getting crammed and slammed all over the southeast. Oh, shit. Just a little hot piece of fucking boy butt. Just getting used and abused. <laughs> getting told us all out. about it. At the, we, went, we went to the barbershop afterward to get haircuts from Shannon Norman. So it's like six of us hanging out in the barbershop. And I think it was the exact opposite of the quintessential black barbershop experience. Because mm-hmm. there was a young man telling us about getting you know, plugged and, 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 you know, sucked and all this <laughs> stuff. And we were all just like, oh, hell yeah, young brother. That a boy. That a boy. A child, you know. So I don't know if it's that accepting in the black barbershop. Depends on the shop. Yes, it does depend on the shop. I can agree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some shops are more accepting. Did you take your hair clippings with you? No, Joe kept them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had you sign them? I, uh, I had Szechuan food. And then just destroyed Will Han- Hancock's toilet when I left this morning. <laughs> <laughs> just abso smashed it. I was drinking of- IPAs, and then I had Szechuan food after a haircut. Hot and, chili uh, oil and shit? Uh, well, Szechuan's its own freaky thing, daddy. Mm-hmm. All right? And it numbs your hole as it comes out, so you can't really feel how much is coming out. <laughs> but oh, then yeah, when I got stuff. up and I investigated... It was a lot that came out. <laughs> nothing nothing was shrunk about this. <laughs> it was the same amount. Even if I was small, it was a lot. Uh, yeah, and I left. And so I, I hopefully Pat gets blamed for it because he moved into my bed when I left. And hopefully they think he did that to the toilet. Does he have a later flight? That's right. He's, he's going to New York. Oh, okay. That's What's... going to hang out with Jack a bit, and then uh, oh, that's right. He's gonna fly out to Milwaukee and hang out with me and Christopher Sharpentier. Did he do a good job? Pat did such a good job. He he good fucking sets. had great sets every show this weekend. I was so proud of him. Fuck yeah! That spot in yeah. Baltimore looked cool. You did two shows, two sold out shows in Baltimore. I uh, mentioned how it was nice of them to uh, get rid of that black church so they could start their improv comedy club. <laughs> and everyone laughed really hard. And in fact, the building was a black church. Damn. Yeah. I know yes. a black church when I smell one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was still a bunch of <laughs> tiny gospel singers like, get us out of here. We were shocked when the church went out of business. Yeah. And then I'm like, why are these ants so loud? What's going on? <laughs> Why does ants have such rhythm? Just fucking crush me already. I don't care. I'm little. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't dream this, right? You were just like in the car stoned. Yeah, I mean, it's just so yeah, I've maybe it's, you dreamed a it. lot of people think that I have been uh, the victim of some kind of embiggening embiggening spread. <laughs> but uh, no, I am, in fact, just born this way. So I think that if I could experience the opposite and being in small end, that would be good. But you're saying it would have it would have gone horribly wrong because you wanted to be smaller, but not minuscule. No, no. So I agreed to be made this small. Okay. But I didn't read the fine print (laughs) and I didn't realize that once I was made small, it was irreversible. Okay. So I got exactly what I wanted. I was made little, but I thought that it would be like, okay, make me big again right but, but, the, but no so, no i'm just small and every, no one feels bad for me because i signed up for it <laughs> everyone's like well yeah you didn't read the fine print what's the matter with you <laughs> idiot mm. what are you saying what are you saying <laughs> yeah, up there <laughs> you can't hear anyone it's just thunder <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah i don't know if i should be this high ever I got a, yeah, I only got a little high before this. I'm looking around. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it, man. Yeah. Is David back from Brazil? Oh, he's back. Okay. God. We might have, we might have, have him on a Patreon episode so he can tell us about his trip. Ooh. Yeah. Good call. 
Yeah, because it's not really an all fantasy everything trip. It's not, you know. He he had a very nice time. You got to put it behind a paywall. He said it was beautiful. He said it was beautiful and life changing and restorative. And also, he's on that CPAP machine, so he's getting REM sleep. Oh, I didn't know my, that. My man's ten feet tall right now, dude. He took an embiggening, he an enlongening. Yeah, he's broader than Broadway. <laughs> I'm broad. I'm he broader said, than Broadway. He said he was loving it down there. That it was beautiful and everybody was very nice. How maybe for the, the food is crazy. Maybe for the next chubby behemoth trip, we'll go to Brazil. Because I think is it fair to announce what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. You Becker, why don't you explain what's happening? I got my request in today for vacation to go to Japan. And I just have to wait to see what happens tomorrow. But even if I don't get approved, I have enough flex time to go. So I'm going. And Ooh, who else doggy. is going? Nathan Lund. Oh my God. Nathan's coming to Japan. Yeah, dude. It's going to be came true. the Guiguo tour of Japan. And also, Becker, guess what? No weed for a week. Allegedly, that's what we thought. What's new? We thought Becker was not going to be able to have his medicine for a week. And he was going to be very unpleasant and turn to gasoline, gas-soaked <laughs> rags. Yeah. But someone reached out last night and told me that if I was in need of any funky good times down <laughs> Tokyo way, to hit them up and they would take me on a tour of the underground. Whoa, that sounds both cool and terrifying. So what this means, Becker, is you're going to trade in your weed addiction for sex. We're taking you to the whorehouse, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You have to have sex with professional prostitutes twice a day while you're in Japan. We get to watch. I could also just drink like a low level of beer. And Lund, you also have to go to a prostitute. No. <laughs> Yes, I asked Creech, and she said it was cool. God, I don't know what that would look like. Like, would I? Ah, uh, think about it. You're huge. They're Japanese. It's no, gonna no, look I'm... pretty cool. I don't know what my dick would look. How my dick would respond with fear or excitement. Hopefully, it would uh, respond with respect and honor. <laughs> bow. Because your penis is kind of like a Ronin. Yes, you'd have to make it bow. Your penis has no master since you've given up on it. You rescinded your control. On it. Yeah. So now your pen is just on its own. It's looking. It's looking to uh, satisfy its lust for blood and flesh. Uh, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> but yeah, it wouldn't be up to me. I said goodbye to you know. I gave him his autonomy years ago. Yes, he, he did. Le- he left and came back. He was like, I got shrunk down. I got re rebigged. <laughs> he saw yeah, a lot weird. of the world. Because it's usually if you if you love something, let it free. But I don't think he really loved yours when you let it free. <laughs> we fought, and then yeah, we he stormed off. I said, like, "Go, who needs you? I don't still care my, about you." Yeah, you balls. were. Your dick was Macaulay Culkin, <laughs> and it wanted to break free because you you were stealing all of its money. <laughs> uh, so yes, you will be both be uh, taken on a tour of the underground. The underground sex parlors of Tokyo will be at your disposal. I don't want underground sex. I want above ground sushi. I want to eat all the fish because who knows when we'll run out. It seems like eventually we won't be able to eat sushi. So I think we should uh, go hard. I think that the three of us in Japan will be the tipping point. <laughs> this will be... This is what Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> warned about. And when they do study the full-scale aquatic maritime collapse of the food source that was once known as fish in 100 years from now, they'll say, and something, we don't know quite what it was, but something around late July 2023, that we can mark as the complete nadir and downfall of the tuna markets of tokyo <laughs> some unknown force enacted itself and totally crippled the economy of the tokyo fish markets we don't know what it was i want us to go all the places that you went with emily where you had to w- limit how much you ate because she would yell at you 
and I want us to live our best lives. I don't think you guys understand how many times we're going to be allowed to eat every day. By the city? Yeah, so we actually had to get special permits. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) We're actually getting there the same way that uh, pro wrestlers and the Harlem Globetrotters come in. (laughs) We have freak of nature visas. (laughs) It's going to be perfect. (laughs) Uh, Well, yeah, I figured Uh, part of it is putting on displays of ridiculous uh, hunger. We are going to be eating... We are going to be drinking. We are going to be sweating. It's July in Japan. It's going to be brutal in that respect. But other than that, we can have all the hot soup we need to cool down our warm bodies. Nice. I mean, I'm talking wake up, go downstairs, eat a $40 strawberry platter. (laughs) Next thing you know, you swing in, you get coffee. They got those thick souffle pancakes as long as your fucking nose. They jiggle. Have... Yo, they jiggle. Have a couple stacks of those. Go to the train. Get off the train. Hey, what's waiting for us? Octopus fritters. Well, I wouldn't want to be rude. Pound a couple <laughs> of those. They're the size of fucking Christmas tree ornaments. Oh, let's go into the shrine. No one do the voice. No <laughs> one touch the corner of your eyes. We're being respectful. All right. Uh, we walk through the shrine, and you literally have to bow when you enter the shrine, or else you're being rude. So you Mm -hmm. get a bow. No one's mad at you. (laughs) No no giggling. And also you can do whatever accent you want because people don't understand (laughs) that the regional accents are often equated to different types of people in America. So we can do we can do Latino accent. We (laughs) We can can be any any American we want. That's right, dude. I'm going John Leguizamo because he does them all. (laughs) Nice. I'm going to be like, oh, what you say? Mm-mm, Ricky, uh uh-uh. I'm gonna do I'm doing all the hits. <laughs> You're gonna go full pest. Yes, I'm gonna go full pest because I think that he remember Stinky Winky, I think had Down syndrome. So I can even do that voice if Stinky I Stinky Winky is the vampire voice. So he was a vampire with Down syndrome? God, Leguizamo <laughs> did deserve a BAFTA. Um, <laughs> ramen, sushi, the best pizza in the world to the Tokyo tea site. It's everything you guys want it to be. And I'll be drinking light beer and showing you around and goosing you and taking going you to blowjob parlors. It's going to be awesome. We're not going to blowjob parlors. I mean, we are, but you and I will be outside. While Becker now, gets I, sucked dry. I think that what's going to need to be important, Lund, is that you just need to talk to Creech and tell her <laughs> you're, you're going on a sex tour of Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I am. Just tell her the truth about it. Just be like, look, Becker is single and Sam wants to show us the other side. He's the king of the underground. He's the king of hard style. And uh, for the Patreon, I need to be able to get sucked all I want. Yeah. <laughs> Why, what are you telling Emily? Same thing. Emily told me when I went over there the first time that I could get sucked. Dude, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she, was, that still... I, she was She was like, yeah, these blowjob parlors are everywhere. I could go get my fucking nails done and you could just get sucked. I was like, this, I do not want to have this conversation. This is really upsetting to me. This is horrifying. <laughs> but you're going to do it when she's not there? No, no, I don't want to get sucked. I want you guys to get sucked and <laughs> tell me about it. Because <laughs> that's what does it for me. No, I'm married, but Nathan can do it. Yeah. Well, I'm saying I want, I think Lunch should just have a conversation with Greech first. <laughs> no, I don't need to have a conversation. Do you want me to practice? Let's let's role play it. I'll be no. Creech, you be Lund. No. Okay. I'll be Lund, you be Creech. <laughs> no. Okay. I'll be Becker, you be Creech. <laughs> they, they don't need to have a conversation. <laughs> okay. How about this? Is let's do Creech talking to Becker after you have the conversation with Creech. Okay. Are you a part of this? So am I Becker? Yep. It doesn't matter. Every time you want to role play, it's dumb as hell. It goes Let's with, just yeah. move on. <laughs> Why won't you guys riff with me? It's I just want to riff with dumb. my buddies. You're too high. R- believe me. It always oh is God. boring. So this hurts me. Okay. Well, okay. Suck, if you just want to parlors, t- noodles. And that's actually I call the noodle parlors the suck parlors because you can <laughs> slurp over there. I'll You're expected suck, to yeah. slurp. 
I'll suck nudes. But yeah. I'm not gonna be sucked by a nude person. Uh I am so excited to go to Tokyo with my weirdest, funkiest friends. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Also, uh, I like the idea of their just because Paris was so stressful to know that you we can't speak the language and everybody will hate that we can't speak the language in Japan. They don't care. Right. Like they know we're not going to speak or it's like even worse to speak really good Japanese as a just a random American dude. Right. Like a little. Creepy. Oh, dude. They have they zero don't. expectations that we'll communicate. Yeah. yeah, we'll point and grunt and we'll pay them for their foods Mm -hmm. and we'll be happy they'll be they'll have mixed emotions you know because it's like yeah they they spent a bunch of money but now i have to be closed all next week (laughs) (laughs) this is the first vacation i've ever been able to take in the 35 year history of my noodle cart (laughs) oh and uh or wait did and you... also, the beauty of them is that they also abide by the no one can be mad at me logic. <laughs> <laughs> so they can only shut down if they know that no one's going to be pissed. Did you... So we'll, we'll like free them. Did Emily uh, forbid you from eating street foods in Japan or just no. Ecuador? No, because Japan, the standards of hygiene are so high. Okay. I w- was excited that maybe... That would be something you'd revisit or be able to visit. As two gluttons, uh, I mean, so in Japan, they have a term for it. It's fat fucks. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Me being able to shepherd you guys through Willy Wonka's factory, (laughs) and I'm the Oompa, the Loompa, the Willy, and the Wonka, I've got the golden ticket. Yeah. It's going to be splendiferiumptious. I'm so stoked. I need to get get maybe hang out after the pod and ask you a couple of questions. Uh, I, I think it'd be a good idea for me to just be on the same flight as you. Uh, you're going to be on the same flight as Lund because I'm going over from Chicago. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I meant Lund. I gave you my flight information, so just get, Is the, the, t- get okay. the ticket for that. I just had not right now. in detail. I just used it to look at the time. Because I wanted to make sure. Because one of the ones Sam sent me had like a 22-hour layover in Honolulu. No, no. Yeah, no, no, be Becky. Able to do, do what I did. I think cool. it made the most sense. I try, I looked at Skip Lagged, and it was not 1,800 anymore. So I thought it went up. And then when you shared that picture after the fact, Sam, I was like, well, what the fuck? So I don't know. You definitely don't go to United site uh until you're ready or outside of incognito mode until you're ready to buy because i think i got i got screwed out of a few hundred bucks okay. you're gonna get screwed out of so much cum from your wiener when you go to these <laughs> fucking suck parlors no way suck parlor usa baby i'll go to a suck <laughs> parlor for you sam yes dude awesome this is yeah. big so it, it doesn't sound like we have enough time does this, pat had a passport before Oh, I think that Pat probably won't be able to he accompany sat on his us. Passport. Yeah, he sat on his passport and then he spilt fucking honey mustard on it and he accidentally ate it because he thought it was like a tasty book that he, and no one was allowed to read but him. Uh, but I do want to reach out to our faithful listeners right now. Now, I know that you guys think I'm stoned and... Uh, dumb as hell because you said you are (laughs) well again i'm just a fucking throbbing nerve center i'm just an open heart and you can do surgery on me or you can spill chiclets in there uh but we really want to fucking chronicle this whole thing so if you want to see our fucking big full-bodied antics in japan i'm talking lund dressed like a geisha all right i'm talking (laughs) yes I'm talking Becker in full face paint. I want I want to get my feet bound. Like, let's go for it. Let's do the whole thing. So if you want to see us over there, we're going to figure out how to do it. But we really want to have enough money to bring a camera guy. So join the Patreon. You know, I know we bring it up all the time, but we're doing uh, we're doing cool stuff. Chubby Behemoth on Patreon at patreon.com slash Chubby Behemoth. Just go join. Your little five buck contribution is going to go a long way. Strength in numbers. Let's be the anthill. Here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to be a big old ant pile. 
and we're going to be the grasshopper that you rip the limbs off of. And for your entertainment, you guys all get together, the mighty pile of ants, and you can tear us apart while we try and fight you off with just our jaws. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. You're, You're so high like high. We're, <laughs> You're very stoned. We're sacrificing <laughs> ourselves so that they can enjoy themselves, all right? And if that means me carrying around a big gong, wearing a diaper, I don't care whatever we need to do, all right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, it'd be fun is if we dressed it, if we wore suits over there, we should go get suits made. Got all like, wow. well, see, you guys would have to get fucking wasted. And then you could also be like the passed out businessman on the park bench. Yes. I you mean, I, it. I, I don't, don't I feel I don't, bad faking it. You'd have to actually get fucked up. I think that I'm willing to do that. I'll try that out. <laughs> I'll try that for the first time. I will get drunk in a foreign land and act a fool. In a suit. In a suit, yes. I That's mean, I got thing. drunk as fuck in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I can get drunk as hell in Japan. Not wearing a suit, though. That'll really sell it. It'll be funny. I was wearing a I was wearing a seven strong brand seven shirt. Strong long sleeve. What if seven strong started making suits? They're new. That'd be cool. We had to talk to Sheath. Maybe we can do a Sheath ad where we're just wearing our underwear and nothing else around Japan. <laughs> In the room? No, no, In I'm talking hotel. about on the streets. It's like a cultural exchange. I don't I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> They're very friendly to the mostly nude fat guy. Think about their history of sumo. Fair enough. I don't want to appropriate they, anything, though. Well, guess what? Me and you can do a little sumo slap and tickle out in the middle of Shibuya's <laughs> Crossing. All right, we'll get right in the middle. We'll see you can push each other out of the crosswalk. It'll be great. Yeah, for sure. I could see Let's us doing that. Let's be rude to the Japanese. That's not rude, I don't think, to beat each other up for people's enjoyment. You're right. Okay, let's not be rude. Let's honor the Japanese. God, I've seen video of Stan Hansen just laying it in with these uh, Japanese opponents, and it doesn't look like he's being a very good... Uh, fellow grappler it seems like he doesn't like japanese dudes and he's just beating the shit out of them it's fucked get off up. me get off me you're gross get off me yeah <laughs> just pissed whipping people with his rope the hard thing about these kind of like public spectacle affairs for content in just in japan specifically is it's very hard to tell if you're being rude or it's very hard to tell if you're being lewd because of the way they pronounce the words so we're uh, <laughs> we're going to walk I'm like Stan the Hansen. Pipe. I, I'm not selling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were oh gonna dab. God, that's right there. That's right there. Oh. You're like satisfied with that? <laughs> ah, job well done. <laughs> it makes me want to do the Bobby Crane. Time to clock out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah patrick finished up the elizabeth video that's going to be going live on the patreon uh he's going to have the tattoo video done this week we're just nice. cooking we're fucking kicking ass so hard on our little podcast yeah and it's nice it's nice to have that yeah for sure uh do we need to read an ad we do, and we will in a moment. We have oh, about sure. seven more minutes of podcasting we have to accomplish before we're allowed to do the ad. Mm, we can also do the ad, but yeah. Oh, it's so you want to use the ad as pod. filler for the for the hour? I see. no, 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 no. I didn't. I just wondered if we would do it now. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm cool. I'm like water. You boring. are man. <laughs> room temp and boring. How did the uh, how did the city council meeting go? Uh, it was fine. There was there's just these people here that are all pissed off because um, this woman named Keeley kind of took over Wally's position working for the city. Was and a human turtle? She also owns. Yeah, <laughs> she also. <laughs> <laughs> she's a new she's a new toilet worm. <laughs> in town. He has to hang out in the toilet and wiggle and say, get me out of here. Help uh, me. I'm not even shrunk. I'm usually this big. Yeah, she is tiny. 
and <laughs> she and her husband own a, a bar called the well and i've done shows there they're great they just they had a show there last week with a band called the pentagram string band and they are nice. very like tongue-in-cheek whatever you know fun they're not actually like trying to convert people to the church of satanism but this one guy got all pissed off and went and yelled at a city council meeting about how the devil was here in town and you know he's got 300 friends that were that are you know behind him in this condemnation of a city employee also having such an awful event you know just complete bullshit but uh there are a good amount of people here who are just kind of like religious and afraid of all these new people coming to town and 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 changing the town for the worse and so today was a show of support for keely that you know that is not what's going on a few people are really i think trying to stir this shit up because they want to hold on to their power and they don't like that there's new people here doing things you know that might challenge their power or remove them from power so uh megan and i just had to kind of show up and let people know that a lot of people in trinidad are excited about the new businesses and yes there's bands that come through and they should be able to play some songs and not be confronted you know like sh shut down so hopefully that's I think what that happens if i ever get to the point in my life where i'm going to a city council meeting to complain about a cool satan string band if i'm, if I'm ever down there being like i don't want the devil in my town I want you guys to cut off my peen, load it in a <laughs> shotgun shell chamber, and then put that shotgun with the peen load and put it to my head and blow my brains out with my own dick. <laughs> That's what I want from you guys. Please promise yeah. me that. Oh, um, yeah. I'll do, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Scout's <laughs> honor. Or if this experimental surgery does go through, <laughs> and I do, in fact, become small, um, I, Lund, I want you to eat me. I want you to yeah. dip me in calamari sauce and put me in your mouth and chew me up and swallow me. Marinara? Yeah, calamari sauce. Okay. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> See, when I make a mistake, I own up to it. Yes, calamari sauce is not a thing. I was thinking of cocktail sauce and calamari and how I want oh, yeah. some of each. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll dip you and I'll dunk you and then I will swallow you whole. Dip me, dunk me, chew me, screw me. That's what I want. <laughs> your, little, your little nude body will get straight dunked. Yes. I'm not going to eat a tiny seven strong shirt. I'm just, I'm going to have you be <laughs> naked. Maybe try to peel yeah. your skin off first. <laughs> I don't have to have the little hairs in my teeth. These seven strong shirts, I don't know how breathable they're going to be down there in old Japan. Yeah. I've been wet. It's a long sleeve. The short sleeve, I think, breathe. I don't like a short sleeve because I, when I have a long sleeve on, I can just roll the sleeves down and I don't have to wear sunscreen. Because mm -hmm. when, when I go to Japan in the summer, I've never been there before, but I imagine when I'm there, I'm going to be the pink menace. I got excited that it was cool there because it's a different hemisphere. Dude, that's what I thought too. Northern hemisphere, yeah. I, I was know. like, oh, it's winter. No, it's not. God damn it. You're going to have a nice winter Australia tour. I know. Yes. I know we are. Yeah, Australia, I'm coming down there. If you're an Australian uh, listener, from which Japan. we have a lot of, uh, come see me perform in Australia in August. I will say, good day, mate. Rice car. Rice car. That's I'm the tiny. trick to the Australian accent. Look how Rice fucking car. tiny I am. Look how You're... fucking tiny I am, mate. You get to go from Tokyo to Sydney, which is, I'm sure, not anywhere near as crazy of a flight as holy shit going to or from the U.S. Emmy's calling. Let's see what she thinks about me being small. Uh, we could probably finish the um, episode. Hold on. Emmy, one second. Mm, yeah. Emmy. Am I on the pod? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Emmy, What's your question? So my question would be, what would happen if I was shrunk down to like the size of an eyelash? Would you still <laughs> love me or would you be mad at me? I wouldn't be mad at you. I mean, it depends why you were shrunk down. Like, I signed up for a program, <laughs> but I thought that it was all, I thought that if I got shrunk down, they would then allow me to get 
rebiggened, but they did not. And I'm just shrunk down forever now. That would be a huge bummer. But we'd probably save money on like flights and stuff because I could just put you in my pocket. That's right. And also food. But yeah. if we were to make love, I'd have to crawl inside of your body. Ew, no. I'd have to put my whole body in your body. That's disgusting. <laughs> and then when I, was done, when I was done in there, I would say, okay, squish out the baby, go. and then you get to give birth to me. And I'd say, you're my mommy and my lover. I would <laughs> cream pie your body out. Well, oh, no, because I'm not making that big of a mess. No, you, you were, like I would like squirt your body out of my vagina. You were yeah. never an eyelash. You were, always, you were two inches. Um, if you're the size of an eyelash, it wouldn't make a difference down there. Yeah, you get lost in there. You'd have yeah. to be like the size of a shot penis. glass. <laughs> mm, I think a shot glass would be good. Or <laughs> maybe, yeah. Anyway, what do you want? Lund's pissed that you're offering the pod. Do you did you order pizza? Do you want me to order? Do you want me to pick anything up on the way home? Yes, order pizza. I have to go. I'm on my podcast. God. Uh, I... But only only half a slice for you because you're small now. I'm gonna shrink her ass down and shove her in my pee hole. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> you know, a you know, shot so... glass in your pee hole. Thanks for listening. Join the Patreon, samtalent.com, nathanlund.com under construction, coming soon. Not under construction. Completely <laughs> finished. No, not yet. No improvements left to be had on nathanlund.com. <laughs> you're finished. I when think I'm, we figured when I'm it done out. With you. Uh, Milwaukee this weekend at Laughing Tap. Come see me in Lund next weekend. We'll be at Secret Group in Houston on Friday the 23rd. We'll be in Hyenas, Fort Worth. If you're in the Dallas, Arlington, Fort Worth Metroplex, come to Hyenas June 24th. San Diego, La Brea, SamTalent.com, Detroit House of Comedy. Come on out, guys, and get on that Patreon so we can take someone to Japan to uh, film Becker getting sucked off. <laughs> yeah.